Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com, where the pen is mightier and the language is the true battleground. Remember, this is a fun, friendly, educational battle. Discussion of topics, questions, and answers is encouraged. And for everyone watching at home, you can learn more about Battle English at WeSpeakEnglish.com. All right, Jennifer, how do you think round three went? Round three. This is fun. I, first of all, want to say I am amazed, guys, because I can't remember the last time I ever made a video in 24 hours. So the fact that they pulled this off, I am very, very impressed because a lot goes into lesson planning in general, but lesson planning for a video involves planning it out, at least partially writing a script, if not word for word, you have to flesh it out to some extent. And then you film, you don't get it right in the first go all the time. There's going to be multiple takes. They have to edit, upload. It's a process. And the fact that they did this in 24 hours is amazing. So good job, guys, truly. <laughs> I don't know about you. I, I don't churn out videos in 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, um, that, was, that was amazing. Uh, both of them, I thought, had great video lessons and Daniel, you know, I really think that his charisma just mm -hmm. shines through on videos and it's this quality that is really hard to, to have mm -hmm. that he just kind of naturally shows, you know? What Daniel reminds me of is I, I, I've seen this before and it just um, amazes me. I remember I was looking for pictures a long time ago online to use in a video or maybe a lesson. And I came across um, this teacher with students. They're like in a jungle or woods or something. And the teacher was just there out teaching the students. Maybe there was a board or a paper, but they had none of the technology that we have today. It was the teacher giving the knowledge and giving practice that was their classroom. And it really takes a special kind of person not to have much in the way of tools or resources and to work with what's within and deliver from there. It's all possible. Tools are wonderful. They enhance our teaching. They do. But at the same time, if you were stripped away of all of that, could you still teach? How comfortable would you be? And um, it just Daniel's delivery reminds us that you, you can be very simple and still effective. And what carries that is personality in video. Um, so for Daniel, he has wonderful energy on camera, which is so important. Um, whether you're on camera in the classroom, if there's negative energy, it's really hard to watch even past a minute, right? He carried it straight for um, 10 minutes with the same level of energy. So I really appreciate that. Good explanations. Um, very natural delivery, I noted, good examples for context, right? He was thinking about the context of teaching these words. So it, the main objective was to teach the pronunciation of them, but he took the time also to explain, which is, again, showing how all these skills are connected, that when you learn vocabulary, it's the meaning, but also how to say it, when to use it, who uses it, in which context. And Daniel had very good awareness of all of that and how all those aspects come together. So good context for each of the condiments. A um, very nice personal touch, which is something I, I greatly appreciate. Um, you know, there's a couple different styles basically that teachers can take. It's, you know, person on screen, face on screen, give the information versus, hey, like make a connection, let's spend some time together. And I have something useful to share with you. It's a completely different learning experience, right? And I appreciate that he worked in some personal commentary anecdotes that was not a digression, but it supported his explanation. He's talking about like his travels to Italy or where else he's been. And it engages, which is so important for a 10 minute lesson. Can you hold my interest and make me want to spend those 10 minutes with you? Um, so he's very successful in that. Good job, Daniel, for that. I also noted the number of repetitions, um, which is something I hope teachers are aware of too. When you're teaching something for pronunciation or vocabulary, how many times have you said the word? because they need to hear it. And not just like over and over, like, um, what is, I don't know, salt and pepper, but I forget which one, which one he said, I don't know, like salsa, salsa. You'd say it five times, 
or more. You, multiple repetitions are necessary. The students need multiple exposures to that word to um, for them to clearly understand it and then also take note of the pronunciation. So whether um, the number was intentional or not, I appreciated the repetition of the target word as he worked his way through the list. Um, yeah, I have a couple more comments, but I'll stop there for a moment and see if you agree with that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely agree with everything you've just said. And, um, you know, I just have to throw in play, playing the devil's advocate, right? So um, the quality of the video and audio could be a little bit better. Um, but like you said, like using what you've got, I, I mean, it, it was very natural. Everything was, you point out the repetition in the target words. This was, this was great. I agree with everything that you said. Okay, what I am going to throw out is the list. So if you remember the original challenge, there was a list of um, topics to choose from. So I would say, okay, it was a 10 minute video, which means I totally accept the choice to add on to the list, you know, um, 10 items for a 10 minute video, I think originally there were five. But Originally, the task included completely different ingredients, which I didn't hear. <laughs> the, right. the, um, and I was hoping to hear variations of mayonnaise, like mayo. And do you say syrup or syrup? What is syrup? <laughs> mayonnaise, syrup, um, butter. Was, are you going to teach a flap tea or not? Uh, mustard and ketchup. So I want to say the original five somehow slipped away and then sambal came up and I didn't even know it. And I'm like, I do think mayonnaise would have more relevance and yeah. more frequency in this list. It was interesting and I learned something, but again, for the language learner, I think mayonnaise would have been the better choice to insert. So whether he discarded some of the original um, uh, condiments um, or not, that, that's one thing that um, I, wouldn't have scrapped all of them. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And the ones that were in the list were were very relevant, very frequent. Um, Sambal? Yeah, that one I think was more <laughs> him because yeah. of where he lives and, and his experience. And then some like, uh, I think he had the example of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> which I can't say. <laughs> um, which like, you know, you, you're living in Massachusetts. So like there's Worcester the 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 town the city of, shire right and yeah. and yeah i would say shire i wouldn't say sheer or sure I forget what he said but so like that that one also i feel like most american people and i don't know Avoid it. of course i'm speaking about american english only and he's australian so i don't know if it's really relevant but most people here wouldn't know like wouldn't pronounce it that way at all and they might say warchester or warchester or Something we butcher like it, but we but we know it. We all know it's in this bottle with a paper. We know what we're what it is when we see it on a table. Um, but sambal, we wouldn't know. So, strictly speaking, from the perspective as an American English speaker, I would. It was interesting, but I would have scrapped sambal from the list, and I would have liked to see um, mayonnaise or Worcestershire, or whatever it is, sauce. And I, I yeah, to do the research because I it would have taught me how do you say it? How should I be saying it? <laughs> So um, if we pivot over to um, Jeff, if I'm impressed by both for having created something within 24 hours, Jeff poof, totally raised the bar with the editing within 24 hours. Oh my gosh. Like I did not expect that level of editing within 24 hours. I was very impressed. Um, I also loved the beginning. Again, not doing something just for frill, but working it in. It was very clever to use the dual purpose bottle opener um, and, and talk about how a structure and grammar can serve more than one purpose. So it was a very clever intro um, with very smooth editing. And I really appreciate that. Um, very engaging in terms of the editing. It was done to, to enhance the lesson and not to just put an icing on the cake, right? Yeah, yeah, his his video editing abilities really shined here, and Ooh, yeah. So, so that's you know the quality of the video. We could see that that was higher here, um, and audio, and so you know that maybe doesn't play into teaching, but it plays into producing content that is teaching content. So, I feel like the better it can be, that has to be worth something too. Um, yeah, and the lighting. Yeah. Everything. I yeah. mean, he's cut it down. Yeah, I, I 
things that I'm still after all these years still working on. <laughs> I struggle, I admit. Um, I also appreciate from the lesson structure, the scaffolding. And for those who don't understand scaffolding, it's how you build up. You start with simple things and then you get more complex. And so the way that he presented the information um, was done in a way not to overwhelm people initially within the first few minutes, but to start with the familiar and then go from there. So scaffolding was present in the lesson structure. I appreciate that. Um, I also noted in his delivery, it's something that I tried to do um, again. Um, something that we should all be aware of as teachers, especially through video. Um, when do we speak more slowly and articulately? And when do we switch back into our everyday speaking, especially at rate, move back into fast speech and reduction, et cetera. Um, I liked that he had some of that variation. It's often what I've said, and I've picked up the pace over the years myself, but I still defend my choice to slow down especially when it's a grammar explanation. And I feel this is a little complex. I need you to follow along. I will slow down to make this point because I don't want people to struggle with comprehension of what I'm saying in terms of you know sounds and such, um, but the content. Um, so he did have variation of speech, which is a subtle skill to master. And I appreciated that. Um, he had plenty of opportunity to speak naturally, but during critical grammar explanations, he slowed down. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I noticed that too. Um, you know, I I thought that they both had a pretty good teacher voice. Yes. But yeah. felt like Daniel's charisma allowed that to be like very natural. Yes. Uh, whereas like the Jeff that we saw in the rounds and the Jeff that we saw in the lesson, of course, they're not going to be the same, but I felt like with Daniel, they were like... That's that. I don't know. There's just this indescribable quality about him that gives him this thing. Um, not that Jeff doesn't have that, but uh, I just felt like like I caught the teacher voice in the in the beginning, and it stood out. And so so like yeah, the variation stood out because it was kind of set. Whereas in Daniel's video, I felt like from the beginning I was with him or, or something like that. Like. It's hard to describe. I, I also feel the, the approach of working with a whiteboard um, set up expectations for this lesson feel. Um, right. and, and also the, the directions that Daniel was giving was very classroom familiar for those who've studied in a classroom of like repeat after me or let's move on. It was predictable, but in a comfortable way. Right. Um, so I, I think overall it was, it was a very comfortable, positive, natural experience overall. So I, I appreciate that. Um, so both are bringing something to the table. One thing I want to call Jeff out for, just like I called out something for Daniel, like, hello, the original list had these five and you scrapped all of them and went <laughs> in your own direction. Um, there's a small typo, actually more than one, you got to be careful. And I know that the time is what prevented this um, from being caught. You're teaching the present continuous or the present progressive, not the present perfect. And on the screen, um, more than once, I believe the present perfect is what was up there, um, mm -hmm. which could, oh, you did not, yeah, you got to be careful with those call outs. And I, hey, everyone who uses call outs has done this, even if you're writing on the board, sometimes like you're, you're saying one thing and you're writing a different thing, it comes out, but call outs um, are tricky, our fingers are typing on the keyboard and your, your attention's focused elsewhere and you don't catch the fact that you use the wrong term. Um, I've also said sometimes, I'm saying like subject plus verb and out of my mouth comes object, but I didn't hear it because I'm already thinking about yeah. where this direction's going. And it's not until even later during editing, I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I just say? Yeah. <laughs> right now, I figure out a way to take that out and still make it work. <laughs> or just the disclaimer, sorry, at, you know, time stamped at this. I, I, I misspoke. I apologize. It, you know, I don't have a team catching me um, when I speak on camera. Well, another um, thing I really liked about Jeff's lesson was at the end, the, the exercise. Yes. yes. I that was a really cool element to include. And because it is a 10 minute lesson, he did deliver the information that he needed to deliver before that he had enough time to do that. And I felt like it was really good. 
It was the full package in the sense he had something to engage. There was um, explanation, examples, and then the practice, um, which within a 10 minute video should be possible. Um, so if, if you look at it from that standpoint, you think the final minute in Daniel's lesson could have been a wrap up, a summary, um, some way to review quickly and integrate uh, the words. I think Daniel made an attempt at the same thing when he like referenced a book like go get go check out my book about this or go like moving on to the next resource putting it into practice but i felt like jeff executed it way better uh because he gave the practice and if it was if it were about pitching a product at the end then daniel went right to it but i feel like still jeff could have pitched something at the end of his and it would have come across even better because of the practice yeah so um, again, great job for even producing something so quickly, okay. something of quality within 24 hours. Um, both had more strengths and weaknesses. Um, there are things that all teachers can look and applaud and take away and say, oh, that's good. Maybe I need to do more of that, that natural energy. What's your energy level when you teach? Hopefully it's like not off the charts. It doesn't have to be, but you want to bring that positive energy. And remember that whatever tools you select, make them work for you, make them support your lesson. And they're not there for frills. They're there to support um, what you're doing as a teacher. Um, there was that, yeah, I, I don't appreciate seeing a, a typo like that, seeing it, that we're teaching one topic and the label on the screen is saying something different. But in the grand scheme of things, it was a really well-designed lesson, Jeff. And really well polished, well planned, well delivered. And for that reason, I'm going to go three and two. Three for Jeff, two for Daniel. I'm going to do the same. Three for Jeff and two for Daniel. Okay, let's count the total points. Jeff, Fluent American, the Flutenant, is our champion. Well done, Jeff. And Daniel also gave a great performance. To everyone watching, if you'd like to join Battle English as a challenger or even as a spectator, go to our website, wespeakenglish.com slash battle English and discover what battle ready English looks like. Stay tuned for more Battle English. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next battle. Thank you to everyone who participated in this battle and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Battle English at wespeakenglish.com. Do you agree with the judge's decision? Write a comment under this video and tell us your opinion. Learn more about Battle English at wespeakenglish.com.